First, we need to prepare the bags for the coral. I use heat sealed bags, and get them by the roll. This isn't the only method, I just find that they have the lowest chance of leaking. Other popular options are tying, rubber banding, or metal banding fish bags. These are all valid options, I just find heat sealed bags to be more reliable. Sample cups are another great option. Just ensure the lid is on right and the cup is well packed so the lid doesn't come off. Just don't use zipper bags. They're not meant for shipping and will leak or pop open. I wrap the bags around a piece of cardboard to get consistent sized bags, roughly 5 inches. That's my preferred size, but you can use different sizes. Then you just cut the top and bottom and you have bags ready to seal. I cut two bags for every coral I'm shipping so I can double bag the coral. At this point, I am going to write the name of each of the coral on the bags. I like to do this because the coral might be stressed when they arrive, so this helps you identify each coral, even if they're closed when they arrive. Now, using an impulse heat sealer, I seal the bottom of each of the bags. You may want to seal it twice, about a quarter inch apart, to make sure it doesn't leak. This can take a few minutes, so just be patient. Sometimes I'll even prepare bags a day or more ahead of time so I have them ready. When I bag the coral, I like to add a couple large pieces of activated carbon. This just helps with any small amounts of chemicals released by the coral as a defense mechanism, as well as anything that might leach into the water from the plastic. After I put the coral in the bag, I fill the bag with water from the same tank the coral was in. I lay the bag on the sealer, get the air out of the bag, and seal the bag. Then, I seal a quarter inch or half inch lower to get some stiffness and pressure in the bag. Once sealed, I squeeze the bag gently to make sure it's not leaking. Finally, I put the bagged coral in another bag and seal that one. This serves a few purposes. First being in case the first bag starts to leak. The second being another layer of protection. And finally it helps maintain the temperature of the water a little more. Now that the coral is bagged, we can prepare the box. I find that the styrofoam insulated shippers hold temperature the best. During spring and fall I tried to use the insulated box liners, but I don't think they hold the temperature as well. I pack the bottom and sides of the foam container with packing paper. This helps hold the coral in place, adds some padding in case the box gets dropped or damaged in shipping, and helps hold the temperature better in the box. Now I'll put all of the coral in the box. I try to pack the bags as close together as possible. Make sure the box you use fits all of the coral and has at least 2 or 3 inches left on top. It's okay if the coral are packed tight, as long as they're not crushed or risk breaking branches or crushing coral in other bags. If the temperature outside is colder and you plan to use heat, or if it's hot and you plan to use ice, pack the box with packing paper until there is about 2 inches left in the top of the box. Otherwise, fill the box to the top with packing paper, and ignore the next step about the cardboard shield. Cut a piece of cardboard about the same length as the inside of the box and about 2 inches wider. Slice through one side of the cardboard on each side to create an almost table-like shield to put on top of the packing, with the wings pointing down. This protects the coral from overheating or overcooling. Basically adding a safety layer between the heat or ice and the coral. If you're packing with ice, simply place a small bag of ice on top of the cardboard. For heat packs, you'll need to shake the heat pack to make sure it activates. You can wrap the heat pack in packing paper to release heat slower, or if you place it on the cardboard it will heat this space faster. Either way, the coral's temperature will change slowly because the heat or ice needs to get past the cardboard and all of the paper before the temperature of the water is affected. Now you can put any goodies like stickers or coupons next to the heat pack, and pack that half of the box with packing paper. Leaving the space above the heat pack open for air to get to the heat pack. Next, if you're using a heat pack you may want to put a small hole in the lid of the box. This lets more oxygen get to the heat pack and get hotter. Without the hole, the heat pack can only use the amount of air in the box to heat. Unfortunately, there isn't a real science to this and you need to go by your best guess based on how cold the shipping location will be that night and destination temperature the next day. Finally tape the foam box closed and put it back in the cardboard box to ship.
Here is a rough cheat sheet for how I consider heat and ice at the time of making this video. It's not a firm rule, but it's something to use as a baseline. Always lean toward letting the coral get a little cold, heat stresses and kills coral faster. If you're shipping from a location that needs heat, to a location that needs ice, basically 20 degrees difference, you may not want to ship that day. Consider delivery time as well. For example, I tend to spend more to ensure delivery before noon the next day. That means I'm not as worried about the temperature of the destination because it will only be in transit for a couple hours. When I drop the coral off though, it can be about 6 hours in that location. Remember that most overnight shipping goes through hub locations and that's something to think about as well. But if the coral is well packed, it should only be a few hours and not much to worry about. When it comes to choosing how to ship the coral, I only use UPS next day air. The coral gets there by noon most of the time and is almost the same price as the next day air saver. Saving a full day worth of risk for about $5 more. The next day air early is a lot more, and usually only saves about 2 hours. So I don't use that one. You can see the normal shipping price of an average box of coral costs over $200. Usually UPS has a promo code at the top of their website. Otherwise, I use Pirate Ship, not sponsored, to save on shipping. Whatever you do, do not use two-day or longer shipping. Don't risk the coral for a couple dollars. And that's about all. Thanks for watching and I hope this video helped. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Finally, check out ReefStable.com for saltwater aquarium articles and some of the highest quality coral at the best prices.